He makes it a a spray fest around smokes a lot of the time, which can mean variance, but we'll get it back into that in the buy rounds. For now, it is the pistol. Golden with a HE grenade. Mm. And MIBR with not one, but two P250s, James. Oh, Drop to players yes. with Kevlar. The thing is, on Vertigo, you can probably get close enough with the Glocks, honestly, to get those fair fights. But well, I mean, this we'll is... No, 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 no. There's plenty of places. This being one of them. Get to where Crims is, and you're fighting people at the back of the site on the scaffold as well. There's a lot of long ranges across the site towards B from the steps. There's plenty. You'd be surprised, Hawker. I am surprised, James. You have surprised me. Get your rulers out, tape measures, laser measurers. I used to use one of those in buildings like this a back in the day. Laser measurer. Laser measurer, yep. Yeah. I don't even know what that is, but it's a I measurer it's just a that uses a laser. <laughs> yeah, okay. Believe it or not, Hawker. <laughs> wow. Much to learn about words, this lad. <laughs> oh, roll on, sliding out for a double kill. Great play from him into that heaven position. Flusher and JW's on the flank. Oh, it's just brutal. MIBR is screwed here. Flusher from the back of the site gets two kills, and that is almost a clean sweep for Fnatic in the pistol route. Picks up a P250 as well. Great awareness there. Increased armor penetration can come in handy on these potential force buys. This map has changed a lot. Maybe there are more changes to come. We saw some compatibility updates recently uh, for a number of maps. But no update from Revolver just yet. But that's a different topic for another day. Well, there will be no force by it seems. There will be two P250s, however, in the hands of MIBR. There's the Florida Man P250, as I like to call it. Fnatic with some SMG, some rifles. Some spotting from Brolan. Flash is playing close with that UMP. Again, the damage fall off is significant on that weapon. The closer you are, the better. I think for Fnatic as well, having Brolan do really well on the pistol is a, a good indication for this game. Because against Mad Lions on this map, he was really good at locking down that mid position, at dealing with some of the aggression Mad Lions went for in that spot. So I think he could definitely be a big piece of the puzzle for Fnatic on this CT side. One player falling there, Golden dying to the P250 at range, but Crims is here on cleanup duty with the MP9. Oh, jumping as well. You said it before, James, that the MP9 has that good jumping accuracy. Yep. Gets a FAMAS at the end as well. Okay then, MIBR on a T side. We'll play, pay close attention to the grenades. I'm sure this map will be very imposing to people at home in terms of playing it yourselves as well. We'll try to explain the utility as we see it. Spend some time learning some of these uh, grenades. You've really got to force yourself, otherwise you'll hate yourself for a long time. MIBR not messing around, just running straight into mid. Seems that we have a hard read here and there's instant problems for Fnatic. Brolan still in trouble despite that frag. Flashbang from Flush, it didn't go the right way, and Brolan needs help desperately. They won't come in time, though. It will never come in time. MIBR just straight running through mid. However, JW is already on the flank as the bomb gets planted. He might have a chance onto Leo. A nice burst from him. Is he good for the second? No, but he'll buy some time for his team to rotate at least. Smoke got his VSM hunts for Golden. Grenades over the top. Doesn't really hit the mark there. He knows Crimson oh. to the right. Misses jump. Crimson stuck in the smoke, though. Will still somehow get a kill, seeing absolutely nothing. And Fnatic find their third round in the most bizarre of fashions. They had no clue he was there. I don't think they knew he was there until he jumped. Because Golden, you saw Molly that close left position towards the sort of, uh, whatever you call it, wooden panel. This area that he's standing in now, he, he mollied that spot. So it looked like he didn't realize that the timing had worked out for VSM to sneak forwards. VSM will be so frustrated watching that one back in the demo later. Crim's getting one through the smoke at the end there, hearing the player. That was VSM falling. And Fnatic are able to rotate over in time. Again, Brolan doing a, a good enough job at surviving to allow Crims to get into position for one of those earlier kills. This is the smoke you need to learn on Vertigo. The ramp smoke. Throw it like that, and you are good to go. It will bounce all the way down, but Flusher don't care about no smokes. He's going aggressive with the MP9. It is another buy for MIBR, though, and the AKs are finally looking good to win a round. Brolan up close. Two kills for him. That's the bomb drop. He's got his team right back into this round. Smoke on the bomb as well. And again, this is an advantage situation, as an urgent situation for MIBR because it will develop quickly. That smoke buys time for rotation. So much spray. Brolan in the red, but not dead just yet. Bomb still in the smoke. 
And again, all this time where MIBR are trying to recover that bomb, they are very aware that the CTs will probably be closing the net on them. KNG looking for that as JW quietly slinks into the site. Doesn't have the angle, however. Before the bomb's even rescued, the flank is eliminated. Brolan still trying to stay alive. So many risks to be taken. Finally found by TRK, leaving Crims alone. Hasn't died just yet, but that may change soon. MIBR is still so scared that there might be a player sitting around those smokes. It sounded like they were spamming them for a while, but finally they move to the bomb site. They will get the bomb down. Crims won't have an angle to deny that. AK in hand could be worth saving considering the money in the bank for some of the players. Even if he saves, I'm not sure they'll be able to buy. So he's sticking around and, well, he delivers the first headshot. Smoke in hand could be very useful on this retake. If you can just smoke off the left side here, you can actually cut down on the angles considerably. Instead, he smokes the bomb, perhaps to try and bait MIBR in, maybe make them a little bit scared. Oh, the smoke has gone a bit too far, though. Doesn't really do anything for him. Crims about to peek. He gets the first kill, but the time is against him. TRK sitting in the corner, not falling for it. TRK finally goes out wide, and MIBR get their first round on the board. It ends up being a pretty costly one, though. They only save one AK, but I think it is Fnatic who are going to have the weaker buy, if they even buy. Well, let's see how the money is spread on the T side, because they've got a lot of troubles. Fnatic have not made a decision just yet, if it is to spend some cash, and indeed, here it comes. Well, wow. where oh, will they go? This must be a spawn-based play, surely. But I, mean, I would imagine someone goes with him because he's got no Kevlar. Yeah. So he's holding an angle on mid where he could potentially fall back. MIBR quickly towards A. Again, shock and awe. Just fast plays here from MIBR. JW will spot one. KG not really landing the fatal connections, though. He has a smoke to try and buy some space for himself, and he will do exactly that. Got to be careful about where he chooses to stand. Oh, boy. There we go again. The force by problems for MIPR happened once, and it won't happen for the last time here. Not again, JW. Another smoke goes down. This time, no gap on this he side of it. He could creep behind it, though. He could. He has been flanking already. JW a couple of times has got behind MIBR as they go back to B. This time, he's not going as aggressive, but Fnatic still seem to have a decent read that MIBR like to fall back to this B site. They've got a couple of players rotating away from A to be ready to help out on B. The issue is that Flusher is the only man committed to the site with just a Deagle. Broland's more or less in CT spawn, though, and he's got two flashes in hand, so there is a chance. Flusher needs one of them fast. He's going to be blind from it, though. Just swinging completely blind. He'll get there eventually. Flash from Lucas, which blinded him, in fact. Oh, there we go with the AWP now. A great angle for Golden, looking for the final player. Just needs to hold a laser angle, however. They know where he is now, VSM. 1v3. 1v4 in total with 30 seconds on the clock. Waiting for the curiosity, but the bomb's on the floor. No need to be concerned with the flank here. Lining up for a double peak are Crimson, Brolan, and there it is. Instant trade and force by problems continue for MIBR. Again, being forced into a plan B by Fnatic, by Utility. We saw it on the previous map on Overpass with the Smokes. We see it again on Vertigo with the Smokes. That position that JW's in is so powerful with the Deagle as well when you put that smoke down because you can just spam to the body. I mean, Flusher here, it is crazy that he can just run across the site like that and get away with a kill. But then Golden arrived in a really powerful position because MIBR didn't have the nades up to deny that AWP. And Golden lived up to that sniper. In fact, Golden has stuck with the sniper again in this round, James. That is very interesting. Yeah, there was a an exchange. But the thing is, JW can be content with other weapons. Sure. We know he likes to use basically every gun in the game. And it may be a positional based thing, as the AWP is focused on mid. Let's not forget that first round from MIBR. But again, they've been unpredictable on this T side. They've been surging in different directions. Flusher has spotted the boost. He needs some help. Help is on the way. Will there be some flashbangs behind him? Look at the transfer from Flusher. Really limiting the threat in this eco round from MIBR. Lucas now still alive with the bomb. But um, doesn't have much hope of anything. He'll be punctured like a football by Golden with a big pin. And it's 5-1-M for Fnatic. Marvellous.
Yeah, so I guess it was just JW wanting to farm eco frags, basically, having the MP9 in the last round, because now he's switched it over to Golden. Golden will get the MP9, JW will get the AWP. Everything is back to the way it should be for Fnatic. And with a 5-1 lead, I am a little concerned for MIBR just because of the fashion in which they lost that first game as well. Going behind early on this one could be really demoralizing for them. But now that they've got a full gun round out, they can turn that round. JW coming close to connecting with the orb. Yeah, question is, how many players did he see? Because we saw about three, of course, we have the X-Ray. Depending on how, much, how many he saw, there may be a response from Fnatic. See JW on the side now. As the two-man swing comes in from MIBR. Not really using that smoke for this side position. There are variations which you can use. We'll get to that in a second. Crims through the panels will eliminate Leo. Now, will JW go for a deeper peek at some point? He'll hold his angle patiently and KNG is gone. Two players spotted and swatted now around this A-bomb site. JW forced to back away. Golden pops on the site. They will have some issues now. JW trying to avoid the sprays in shotgun mode. He's got to be real careful. Flash goes high. Crims avoids it. No real vision over the top of this smoke, but TRK is so low that one stray bullet would do it. Oh, and it has landed. Brolan gets that kill. JW is going to be so unrelenting in this position, I feel. With the AWP close quarters, he's probably one of the AWPers that's most comfortable taking these sorts of fights. And JW gets it again. Second kill on the round for him. Oh, JW is styling on him. Triple kill at the end of the round. That AWP doing a lot of damage for his team. I wouldn't be surprised to see JW in that sort of spot a lot in this game. That did not look like a great round from MIBR. Just lost, staring at smokes and spraying them. Deleted by the sandbags. Matic looked very prepared for Vertigo. Not too shabby a spray from Brolan. I, th I don't know if there was a molly from sandbags. It looks like maybe they had mollied a T out of sandbags and sprayed where he was likely to exit. So that was pretty smart. Wouldn't call that a lucky spray in that respect. Eco territory for MIBR, uh, average $3,500 per person, and that's not really great. Their Ecos have kind of sucked. They've been deleted repeatedly by Fnatic so far. Both teams coming into this one hot after 50 or so rounds on overpass. But um, Fnatic looking very comfortable on their CT side thus far. We'll see what MIBR do in the future round. But for now, they'll have the Galil on to VSM. They have spent a fair amount of money on this round, heading towards maximum loss bonus, so they can do that. This is what I'm talking about, man. JW is just going to be close range orbing all over the map, even when it's against pistols. Like, realistically, I would probably want JW not to do that in this round, because if he does miss the shot, it's one of the ways in which MIBR could have a chance to win this round. But it's JW, so you don't really tell him anything, because it's probably going to work more often than not. Golden lining a good shot there onto KNG. They should just be falling back at this point. Again, no need to risk giving away your rifles. Flusher with just an MP9 on the B site. Flash in, and it's a solid spray. VSM there with the Glil, unable to trade. Support grenades from Golden. Ooh. Oh, he just went a bit it sideways. It actually helps him. <laughs> we went a bit, he went a bit sideways as he was throwing that, but indeed it will have some area control. Where did that come from, JW? I have no idea where he's standing to get that kill onto TRK, but um, it might be, oh, I've got to find some changes now. In that last round, we saw two players go up the ladder for MIBR on Eco. And ladder position, if you break the glass above it, you can actually bounce an incendiary towards the side where JW has been abusing them to try and force him away from these angles. Because you saw he was trying to dodge the usual spray positions and so on. There are ways to deal with that if MIBR know the grenades. And that would really help them take control of that side because Fnatic had the luxury of doing too many things from there. So we'll pay attention to how that goes if they look to do that. Now it'll be a slower start. Very nice HE from Fnatic, however. And again, GW is back in Old Faithful. Yeah, that AWP angle is so strong if you don't use any nades against it. Especially with Fnatic putting enough early pressure here to hold this position. Like, look at JW's angle. It, how do you even flash this, right? You can't really flash it. You, you kind of have to use that smoke, I feel like, to get him out of this position. And JW has now been smoked off. 
Yeah, Leo's deployed a, a Molotov actually from that ladder position, but I'm not sure where it's gone. Looking at the radar, I don't think it actually landed in the playable area of the map. And GW is still able to abuse this position. Oh he's, how God. on earth is he still alive? Flashbangs, and he's going back again what? with a no scope. It's one more to find. He is undeletable. Oh. Golden will surely check this. Surely he's going to check this. Doesn't look like he is. The Lucas is alone with the bomb. And the bomb site's been abandoned. I think surely Crims has Crims, seen him there. I think he's going for he it. He must have seen him. Yeah. It looks like it. Oh, no. You can't knife him, though. Yeah, he's just, want he's just wanting to go quicker. We're fine. Lucas now 0 and 9. I thought Golden saw the player clipping through the wall almost. It looked like he might have been able to see him. But who the hell knows? So where JW standing? There are smokes you can throw yep. from T-Spawn. There's two variations of the smoke. One sticks out um, more. So if he tries to go behind it, you'll see his legs and you can spray him. So you can take those angles away and force him back. And indeed, I think I think Leo tried to... Uh, well, he, he threw a molly. It didn't go in the right place. But if you force him back from that angle, so he's in the corner where he was avoiding the spray before, you can molly him from there as well, from that ladder position. And we haven't seen... I haven't noticed, I'll say, any of those smokes from MIBR. So JW's been allowed to abuse this position. There is a T smoke, which I think the desk referred to as a gratification smoke, which allows you... The, the T's can throw it at the bottom of the ramp, which allows them to hop up and see over the smoke. Mm. Um, we did see that in a previous round. I don't know if it was used, but it's not enough. He needs to be forced away from his position. They need to give him a reason to stop doing what he's doing, and they've failed to do that so far. 8-1 Fnatic. Yeah, even the smoke MIBR used in that last round could have been effective enough to maybe throw a molly behind it, for example. That could force JW away. But JW, in these anti-eco rounds, has just been taking the rifle and trying to go aggressive with it. This time it's Brolan on the AWP, but the chaos in the ramp is favoring MIBR right now. They will take those trades all day long because there's a the potential for some guns to be recovered for them. They're actually going back to B, though. And look at the minimap. Fnatic have left that B side of the map rather open. Flusher has now just realized He's got to get back to B, but he might not be in a comfortable position. He's got some sound cues. You can see the creep rotation as long has to, uh, mid has to be crossed. Flusher looks away at the wrong time. This was like a Fnatic flare round. They're just doing w whatever they felt like doing in this round. I don't think they'll be terribly concerned with the result of it. They've got the money to fall by in the next round, which maybe invites them to play some psychological warfare. It won't work on this occasion. It might be I will have some toys to play with. But again, they need to give Fnatic a reason to stop doing what they've been doing. In that round, Fnatic were over aggressive because because Fnatic. So you can't really take too much away from that. See if they can change something for this round. JW is 12 for 4 on the CT side of, of Vertigo, which is very impressive right now. And it's him back with the AWP now. Now that it's a full buy, this is where he does go back to the sniper. So it's just against those anti-ecos. He goes for the rifle, aggressive plays. He's happy to go with the AWP this time. Brolan's pushed all the way down into B stairs. In fact, Brolan's pushed all the way through that position. JW's got a kill, as has Golden. Golden gets two from mid, knocking them down on that position. And just as MIBR win a round, this next one goes horribly wrong. Smoke from Crims, which he could have looked behind, but there is a way to deal with that. Oh. You see Lucas on the way now. Crims has got a he's got to make a play here, or does he? He's got his teammates on the way, but he may be focused on this for too long. He knows Lucas is just around the corner. There goes Leo. The bombs dropped now. Three versus one. It's a molly from Fnatic, which will allow them to keep control of the bomb, which they may see if they choose to swing. Swinging around the side now is Lucas. Two more to go. Trying to isolate the fights there. Spotted Flusher, which allows Brolan to move forward. Again, they know they've got the bomb. Flusher does not have to fight to the death here. There is time on the clock, though. There's time for Lucas to clutch. And then there was Flusher. Has he rotated? That's a question. Lucas still with 40, H, 40 uh, seconds on the clock here. Looking for his fourth kill. Convinced Flusher rotated around the back, but he's playing the same position. It would be a very long rotation. He can't really walk all the way to B such as the nature of Vertigo, so it kind of has to be A here. Goes for the fake. Flusher does not move a muscle. Starts to creep now. He's got a smoke Flusher. Sound cues from Lucas. He knows exactly where he is. He can smoke him off. Lucas doesn't even have an angle unless he runs all the way around. 
And Flush looks like he's just going to chase him, but... Again, so many sound cues here. Flush has been given so much information. Can't expect Lucas to be elevated, though. He still has time to fake the bomb. I don't think he can find it now. There we go. Gone to the right-hand side. Does Lucas spray the left? He does. Oh, he's run out of bullets! Oh, that's, I can't believe it! That's so sad, man. He tried so hard. 1v3 it was for Lucas. Maybe even a 1v4 after he got that first trade kill. He turned it into 1v1 fights across the board. It was a stunning shot onto that first player. Roland seemed to think that Flusher had him covered, but he wasn't ready for the fast swing from Lucas. And then Flusher at the end there, he almost got outbrained, but he was the one who got the defuse in the midst of the smoke. Still, a close round for MIBR. They can hopefully take some positives away from that. They were able to trade onto the ramp much more effectively. JW this time has been forced away. KNG also has an AWP on the T side, which could potentially counter JW. But Crims is the man up close that they are probably going to have to deal with first. Seeing some mix-ups now from Fnatic. JW by the sandbags. Crims on the side. A re-smoke goes a bit goes a bit too far on one side though, but this is this smoke Lucas is about to throw is the one I was referring to where you can look over the top of it. But the Fnatic will know what that means as well. So this is just forcing MIBR to waste some utility. And if they're gonna go towards A, they will need some smoke grenades in order to smoke off the site. We know what the sprays look like when the bomb's being planted as it's being diffused. Look at the timing of that HE grenade. That's a funky setup from Fnatic. If JW engages up there, surely Golden gets at least one kill. Not bothering with the side this time. We see the Molly's oh. actually finally landed. Wow, they don't seem to know that Golden's here. The flash comes in. Surely they have to be aware that flash is likely for Golden's position, but they don't know. Golden gets the kill from behind. 25 seconds remaining. Now MIBR have to commit to this A-bomb site. Crims is trapped in this position. They're going to wait for the ramp players to fight. They're going to try and fight together, but the counter smoke is so good for cutting off those short players. Crims backing off through the smoke, gets another kill. 10 seconds remaining, and that bomb has made no progress to the site. Finally, Lucas making something happen, but it's too little too late. 10-2 for Fnatic. And I love that Fnatic said they've put a lot of prep time into MIBR's pick because with Fnatic banning Nuke, I think you can be basically 99% sure MIBR are going to pick this Vertigo. And Fnatic clearly look like they've done their homework here. Yeah, they really do. With this, Despite the success that we've seen from MIBR and Vertigo, in some respects it almost seems like they're unprepared on their T side with what Fnatic have been able to do every single round. It's kind of default smoke stat. I feel like we've been missing. Well, if you fancy the fast beat, Brolan has other ideas. You can see Leo under the stairs, but the Fnatic seem content with this advantage as far as B is concerned, and Flush will be left in position as Brolan offers some help towards mid. Molly and Smoke on the mid spot which may split the crossfire that Golden and Co. could potentially have. Molly for KNG. He'll stand in the flames but not get anything for his troubles. He will get barbecued. 5 on 3. Fnatic looking for their 11th round on the CT side of Vertigo. Flasher with the AK on the B side. Flashed in. No kill on the first attempt, but he's going to have more chances. And he doesn't make the most of it. TRK with a trade kill. Now they've got some smokes onto the B site. There is a gap, though. Crims could line them up. This orb is so good in these spots. Scoped in, spraying them down. They're already low. And Leo needs two more kills in the midst of this smoke. He knows that there was a man committed to the site previously. Crims has now fallen back. But Leo, lightning fast to spot that flanking player. And now he has time to go back to A. Can Crims get the guessing game right, though? 30 seconds. It's going to be a long walk. And I can't imagine he... Take slow steps all the way. Or maybe he will. It feels like forever. Crims slowly backing off in CT spawn. There we go. Doesn't hear the beeps, it seems. Oh. He might not even realize which bomb site it is just yet. Oh, no. 
Okay, figuring it's probably A. Don't know how far those beeps travel on Vertigo. Leo could be anywhere now. Probably at a distinct advantage. The crouch walk from Crimzo. Right angle, right time. Make sure Leo's dead. He's not faking. There's no play dead in Counter-Strike. And it will be the 11th round for Fnatic. What a struggle this has been for MIBR. This is their pick. They almost won Fnatic's. Another good effort from MIBR in these clutch scenarios as well. Like Lucas nearly wins a 1v3 earlier. Leo comes very close to a 1v3 here. They've actually been showing some signs of life individually. It's just that they're so far behind off the back of the early trades, they're never getting the chance to actually put themselves into a, a fairly winnable position, which is a shame. Definitely been impressed by Leo in this series. Even if Vertigo's not going well for them, He's definitely really looking strong. And while wow, Lucas alongside Leo able to team up on Brolan at the start of the round. JW's got a kill elsewhere. Flusher remains close to this smoke. And there are also two Fnatic players at mid that would be able to rotate over very quickly if required. The cops are coming. Smokes towards mid. Bomb's moving away from B, however. MIBR inviting an audience with Fnatic on the second bomb site. Crims is close enough in mid to hear these sound cues, which left JW alone. He's history now, as we can see. TRK baiting. Flusher must realize this by that little random burst. We'll take care of him, and the rotation will begin. Oh, Crims has just got between enemy lines. Leo's looking back towards B, but that's going to allow Crims to flank the A site. Lucas looks back, but that's the bomb dropped. Crims has got a smoke, and there's only 35 seconds remaining. Crims seems aware as well that there might be a man behind him. Leo's coming back, but Crims is ahead of the game. How has he realized this? Nade out. Oh, he hasn't realized it. He throws the nade off the map. Crims will eventually be dealt with. There's only 20 seconds remaining, and now IBR have got to get a move on. They've got to get their skates on as they get towards the B bomb site. Flusher running right back to try and meet them. Who's going to get here first? Flusher jumping down into the site. First man low. It's all on Leo. Eight seconds. He's got to go for the kills. He has to get both these frags. There's no time remaining, and Golden can hide patiently at mid. It's 12 2 for Fnatic, and it's another round that MIBR take close. They can't quite get the round wins, though. The race was on. Frustrating for MIBR. Their opponent has six times the score they do. Crims, such big brain. The timing was unfortunate. You can see how frustrated he is. The man has high standards. The fact he realized that a player could have been ahead of him and probably was to secure the route for the bomb is just great spatial awareness in the first place and speaks to his experience in professional Counter-Strike. That's the smoke I was talking about where you can see their legs, which came far too late now as it's the last round of the first half. DW though is also here. Golden trying to stay alive now. We've got flashbang oh. support. What a flashbang. Who knows who threw it, but two versus two now. JW again going aggressive, and maybe there's a third round in this for MIBR. Flusher on the site. Have they heard the sound cue? TRK facing with the bomb. Galil versus UMP. Enough for a desperate third round for MIBR as we close out the fir first half. The second one is going to be an uphill struggle for them. We are talking Everest on Vertigo, and that comes after the break. wasn't pretty for the side of MIBR in this one. 16 to 2, that is such a brutal scoreline. It is, it is. But you know, it's again one of those things where a team like MIBR, so fresh, so new, that experience, that butt wrecking that they just got. Butt wrecking, butt wrecking. Hey, it's me, Potter. You might be wondering how I got myself into this situation.
it isn't easy thinking up creative descriptions on the fly. So here's how I got myself into this butt-wrecking mess. Shit, I need the audience to understand just how badly MIBR got owned. Quick, Christine, come on. Think of something funny. Got their asses kicked. No, 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 no. Too boring. Too boring. Maybe I can work this ass angle, though. Colin Carnage. No, it's too graphic. That, that would make the Brazilians real mad. Rectal Ruin. It's a nice alliteration, but it's a little too technical. Anal Devastation. I'm into it. Maybe a little too extreme for me. I'll have Thorne tweet that one out later. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Think of something quick, think of something quick. I'm running out of time, think. Ooh, MIBR so fresh, so new. That experience, that butt wrecking that they just got. Nailed it. I hope next time Potter's on a podcast, that episode is called Anal Devastation with Christine Chi. Uh, yeah, I mean, she's into it, apparently. Yeah, apparently she is. I certainly aren't. Uh, but anyway, enough of that break time video. We are back into the game. Three rounds for MIBR as they move into the CT pistol. They are on the ropes, so close to so many game points and overpass, only to find themselves backed against the wall here on Vertigo. Fast B for Fnatic, VSM playing up close, Flashbang is on point, but he's not able to get a single kill from this position. Now he is though, fast flip from VSM to get that man out of the air. He's going to get back to the bomb site, and now Fnatic are going to try and molly TRK out of position. He's got to try and get something done, but it's not meant to be. The rotate has arrived though, MIBR have plenty of players standing ready on this B site, and Fnatic might be having some second thoughts here. Yeah, it looks like the bomb is backing away. Gold is being left in position. Shows some presence. Found himself a one versus one of VSM. Entertaining three of these players who should quickly realize what is happening. I can't imagine Leo is going to be checked for. He is going to be checked for by JW. Awkward for both squads now. Which way will they go? Heading towards the A bomb site, it seems. Brolano tried to cut off the rotation. Or clear the B bomb site. I can't. Imagine VSM sees this one coming. So many potential flanks. He's just about seen Lucas though with 12 HP. KNG could peek. No, he's going to go towards A again. This is so awkward. Three versus one. Now, this is scary for MIBR as well because there's got to be a flank coming from somewhere. But where? Is it for KNG? Is it for VSM? They both have to be concerned. This becomes very, very weird indeed. Brolin hiding in plain sight. KNG will get popped as well, which opens up the A bomb site. JW will make the most of it. Getting that bomb down and leaving VSM removed from the action. Oh, Brolan gets him. Triple for Brolan, who hasn't had to do too much. He was in single digits from the first half because his teammates were playing so bloody well. But now he comes in with a triple. And realistically, MIBR's chances have been snatched away from them unless they can maybe win a force by here. That's what they have to rely on. Really nice to see that Fnatic didn't just fully commit to the B site there. I think some teams would maybe just try and go for the call instantly. But Fnatic realized it's not worth the risk at that juncture. It's not worth the risk at that point. Ow, TRK getting three huh. nades to the face. That is an amazing opening kill from Fnatic. Not the first time we've seen triple frag grenades from them. And it's been successful again. I love the evolution of teams being forced to pay attention to detail in terms of their use of grenades rather than throwing them randomly at the start of a round, etc. They can get so much more for them if they just focus. And that's a great example from Fnatic. Potential crossfire for MIBR, or at least a trade frag situation. 
Crim's made me the man to deal with it though. Oh, Leo. His gun. Oh no, that first shot was a complete disaster. A complete disaster. And now they find themselves in a two versus five. Do they throw good money after bag? Bad, rather. This round is surely not recoverable for them. I think Crims thought he was JW for a second there, flashing himself through that smoke. Not successful in doing so. VSM with an MP9. Not a weapon you would want to use at long range, but he will start to run onto the bomb site. KNG's got the Galil for the long range angle, but both players pre firing from short. Uh, KNG may get one kill, but there is nothing else he can do. Golden closing it out. 14 3 for Fnatic. MIBR, at this point, do you just force up? You're so far behind. I feel like if you want to win the game, that honestly might be your best chance. And they will do so again. They want to try and see if they can break Fnatic early to give themselves some slither of hope. But it's looking more and more likely that Fnatic will be the team advancing through to the upper bracket here. We've got those three nades again. Fnatic making sure no one can push mid early so that they can get that map control. Brolan, the only man holding on this A side of the map, has the SG in hand. But as MIBR get close towards him, he might be in some trouble here if they flash through this smoke. Indeed. Down goes the creek. It's a lot of map control for MIBR as well. That's a big headshot in mid. Now what is the play? Fnatic know that time is against them because it's down to MIBR to take position and JW go for a big swing. Golden just flying through the air. Can't imagine what the accuracy is like from that hang time. Flusher at range with the MAC-10 won't be able to do much. And perhaps there's a chance for MIBR. Can they stabilize? Can they get the AWP? They've got 10 rounds to catch up with. To catch up to. Well, that's what they needed to give themselves a chance. <clears throat> and if anyone is still going to be believing at this point, it is MIBR. You already see Kogu in the background was trying to hype them up. It's going to be Yumi, isn't it? With his 250 <laughs> points. <laughs> Desperation play, let's be honest. But maybe it, maybe it comes true. I think he was ahead of most people. Well, not me. I don't know why he'd be desperate. Not true. me. He's not ahead of you. Is, I want my 5,000 points. Does Crims have no kills on his stat track Tech 9? Yeah. It's a big fat zero. He's uh, picked himself up some new gear. With his gloves, I would consider the... I think it's the Gods and Monsters collection. The geometric... Tech 9. It is beautiful. It's mm. very nice. It's underrated. Got to be a true connoisseur to appreciate these things. That's a great shot from Golden. A position that he was playing in the other half as well. He knows his angles. He knows what to expect. The man can visualize. He sees before he sees. If you perceive, you will achieve. And all that rubbish. He believed in his chances. We're going to go ahead and not go for any more rhymes. VSM, up close. Uh, I personally hate this angle, but VSM seems to get away with it way more than any other player I see. So I will let him off. VSM holding the tight angle, but Flush is ready for it. And Crims has got his first Tech 9 stat track kill in from behind. MIBR losing track of the B bomb site, and they are once again in trouble. It sucks as well. They got that little bit of hope from that last round win, and then this happens to them. Oh, not a knife, JW. Not a knife. Man. Oh, okay. Whew. Lucky. I think JW's lucky Lucas turns around then because I think the knife was coming. But there we go. Fnatic marching towards many match points versus an MIBR who will rue missing their chances on overpass. So many of them as well. But hey, if they are to lose this, they're in a lower bracket. They've got plenty to review because they have been exploited by Fnatic. And they come back stronger each time, as we have seen. That said, it may not be over yet. They won't have too much to fight with. Take pause, so hopefully it won't take too long. Crims is 20 for 9. But again, they had so much freedom on the A bomb site to aggress from the side. That shot from Flusher looked ridiculous, considering it was slow motion. 
fast as hell. I think for Fnatic, it really does feel like they have been growing into this tournament. I, I really feel like they are starting to peak at the right time here. Like this is this is more like the vintage Fnatic we're used to, especially the way in which they won that first map. I've got my Fnatic Hello Kitty jacket upstairs, which I forgot to wear today. Oh, but uh, maybe another day. You'll get more chances if they go through to the upper bracket. They certainly will. God, look at that bicep in the background. I missed it. Ah, uh, it's gone now. Oh. When you're scratching. It's like twice the size. Was it bigger than mine? I think it's four arms bigger than your bicep. <laughs> <laughs> Nerd arms. And mine is still quite skinny. Well, I think everyone's back in their chairs. And the unpause is through. Is this the last round for MIBR? The last stand. Are they about to get thanos Rifles are out. They've got a French gun for TRK. Lucas is on the Deagle. They do well with Deagles in MIBR. We haven't seen much to suggest that they could claw 11 rounds in a row here, but stranger things have happened. It is that map pick after all. boost for Barolan over the top of this smoke, making sure no one gets aggressive, no one gets into an awkward position. K and G about to go up over the top. Not much going on at the start of this round. Fnatic just making sure there are, aren't any early pushes. The boost, I think, is a pretty good time for it. I could see Fnatic just overlooking the boost at this point in the game. Like, they're probably not 100% focused on the Fnatic side of things. The problem is you can instantly get spammed through this uh, metal bit. And, oh, he's made noise dropping down. That gives a good bit of information over to Fnatic. Side will be taken unchallenged. It might be our gambling towards the B-bomb site with a third player. That HE could be nasty. We spoke about the Deagles before. Brief cameo from one as the numbers overwhelm on the A bomb site. Golden at a point in a return though. Three on three. There is a kit here for MIBR. They only have a HE grenade, no smokes with which to try and play around with some variants and such. There's a HE in front of Leo though, which could go towards the sandbags. Will they deploy the other one there afterwards because it would probably finish off the job. There we go. I don't know how Flush is still alive. That's so unfortunate for MIBR. Things go from bad to worse. As I can't imagine they think anybody's here after two HE grenades. He didn't even have 100 HP in the first place. Crimson, he'll be the last one left. The bot, the defuse is here. Great taps. He's really down on the bullets, though. On the tech nine. Another stat track kill to finish off the job. 16-4. A complete wipeout of MIBR on Vertigo. So many comebacks on overpass as well. Fnatic really with an overperformance by some measures. Yeah, got to give a lot of credit to JW. Some of those early rounds, his AWP was huge. And then Crims throughout the whole map, consistently putting up good numbers, even when in the clutch at the end there. Fnatic doing it in style here on Vertigo. And this is a map we weren't expecting them to be that good on. So to win 16-4 on it against MIBR, who have been killing it on this map lately, that is a scary sign. And that is a statement made to all the other teams in this tournament. A very strong performance from Fnatic. And again, looking at what MIBR can take away from this, um, the anti-force buys were always going to be a problem for them in this series.